the People's Republic of China, the oldest continuing civilization. Yaniki, they've had roughly 8,000 years to figure out how to give the ordinary thoda extra lift and take the exceptional to a whole new level. The highly stylized art, the fully realized architecture. But such me, China kaise aage bhaga? It's wonderful, warm and vibrant people of course. All 1.3 billion of them. Okay, so I'm on my way to China. First time business class seats. It's going to be super comfortable, nice and posh, luxurious. And by the way, over there is my travel partner who happens to be sleeping. Excuse me. Excuse me. Looks like she has the right idea. Well, I think I'm going to go and and get myself my business class seat and pass out because it's two o'clock. See you in China. Neha is probably planning ahead, conserving energy so that she can do something crazy, like get an early start. She really likes to sink her teeth in. Very relaxing, I must say. Me too. I really like to sink my teeth into food or drink. Yeah, chew on that. Thank you very much. A guy could get used to this. That's cloud nine, and I'm floating on it. And before you know it, touchdown. After all, India and China are next door neighbors. Just popping by for a cup of chai. See, the Far East isn't that far. North India to South Central China, done in five hours, which gives us one full day in Guangzhou, Guangdong Province. Hmm, a lot of ground to cover. Well, you know Aditya is going to sniff at every whiff of food, and I'll do it my way, which may be a bit more nosy. I'm going to try and pry out the city secrets, like what Guangzhou really means and why they call it that. What do we say? Yeah, should we do the opening? Should, it, should we on. do the opening? Ah, yeah, let's do it. Should we do Come the opening? Yeah, but here no. How what do you want to introduce? I don't know. What do you want Goat to say? City. Um, <laughs> Goat City. Goat <laughs> City. Um, um, <laughs> flower city. Guangzhou. 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 We are in Guangzhou. 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 Your time. So we are in Gold uh, City. Uh, flower city. Rice. Uh, Guangzhou. We're in Guangzhou. We've yes. got 24 hours. Guangzhou, 24 hours. Yes. You check out all the food. I'll check out everything else. And by the end of the day, get the best food that you find. So okay. I'm sorted. And then we'll meet. Yes. And then we'll discuss what happened in the day. <laughs> Come on. Okay, and should we go? Should we go? Okay, yeah. let's go. Let's go. go. Guangzhou, 24 Guangzhou. hours. Let's go. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> The track is fierce and we on the grind. The track is fierce and we on the grind. The track is fierce and we on the grind. Just tell the DJ press for one. Okay. I may not know where I'm going, but I know where I am. See, when travelers land in India, Bombay Delhi ke chakkar mein phas jate hain. Same with China, Shanghai, Beijing. It's the third largest country in the world, boss. There's more. Like right here, China's third largest city. Beijing means capital of the north, and this is the informal capital of the south. He still hasn't said where we are now. I don't think Aditya can say it. Guangzhou. Or the old name. You've definitely heard. Canton. Sunte hai. Cantonese language, Cantonese food. But like he did say, there's more, so much more. I won't start singing in the rain. But how about some ballroom dancing in the rain instead? The Chinese know how to start a party early. They just call it exercise. Hey, I'm where the party's at and I'll bet that Aditya's alarm hasn't even been set yet. More than half the population of China lives in cities. And that's why parks have become the most happening hubs. The citizens love the great outdoors. Except when it pours. 
Even if the rain won't go away, the tourists are here to stay. Now this is a first in any park in the world that I've ever been to. Every park must have its monument. And in its sprawling 200 acres, Yushu has many. And the reason why I'm still in the park on this rainy morning in the middle of Gwangju is a story. And this is how the story goes. So, 2000 years ago, this place was absolutely barren. There was a famine and people were suffering. And then came along five goats. The statue here is a symbol of that and which is why the city is called the Goat City. But why were these goats so special? Because with them came good luck and prosperity. And today, the people follow what these five goats symbolize. The little kid that's on its knees means gratitude. The mother looking back is love. The one scratching the back of the other means one should help out each other. The one who's grazing down there means hard work. That's really important. And the tall ram right in the middle symbolizes bravery. I don't think I'm brave enough to brave this rain anymore. <laughs> Legends and myths play a major role in the everyday, much like the Mahabharata. People truly believe and weave the morals into their lives. They've taken root in the very structures of the society. Hang on, I got distracted. Was I talking about this tree or those stories? Early birds get nothing but wet. Anyway, technically speaking, I got up when the sun came up. And even ancient Chinese philosophers recommend that. Early morning park exercise? Back me up guys, what's the best kind of exercise? The kind that professionals do and we watch in total awe, right? That's why I'm here at the scene of some of the most inspiring exercises ever done. Take that, Neha. I'm here at one of Guangzhou's most prominent landmarks, built to host the opening and closing ceremonies of the 2010 Asian Games. Today, it's a major tourist attraction. Welcome to the Haijing Sa Stadium. It's not a traditional arena with a football field and running tracks. In fact, this amphitheater with the backdrop of the river was created for the drama of the ceremony. Seating for 35,000, athletes brought in by boat. These ceremonies made the Olympics look like a dress rehearsal for opening night. After all, it is the Asian Games. If all men and women are merely players, there has to be a stage. Here's some tall tales from China. World's tallest woman, 7 feet 7 inches. Longest hair, 18 and a half feet. Highest Buddha statue too. Just a thought, if all the countries were students, then China would be that student that you all had in your class, the front bencher who always comes out first. Because this is a country where you have the tallest, the fastest, the coolest, the biggest, the smallest. And guess where I am? On the tallest TV tower in China. And how do I get here? The fastest elevator in China. The Canton Tower, all 600 meters of it, makes quite the impression. Recently built in 2010, it does more than just broadcast a signal. With its observation deck, revolving restaurant, 4D cinema, lounge space, it signals a change. It's the new face of the new China. If the deck view isn't enough for you, you could just wander off in a bubble. The world's highest horizontal ferris wheel brings you full circle. Don't like the long and winding road? There's a shortcut. And I'll be honest, if it's quick and it comes with a kick, that makes me happy. The 30 meter sky drop gives you the straight shot bird's eye view. If you can keep your eyes open. Whoa! It's Lingan style. No man, not Gangnam. The local culture and architecture is cooler and has as many fans. Right, 
So I'm here at the one and only Chen Clan Academy. It's probably the only surviving example of traditional Chinese architecture in all of Guangzhou. And of course, today it's a major tourist attraction. Let's go check it out. Totally old school, right? I meant that literally. As in, this is an old school. The campus where the Qing Dynasty super scholars did ratta for the imperial examinations to become state administrators. The woodwork is out of this world, like olden times 3D. Floor to ceiling, this place is plastered with art. The Lingan style is high drama, and most of the reliefs tell a story, a tale which stretches to the present day, with contemporary art shown in the gallery. Plump piggies are popular; they bring you luck. Plus, they're adorable. And Neha says, "I don't appreciate culture. Plus, pigs are delicious." Back outside, it's all dragons and drama again. This could be the next episode of Game of Thrones. Uh, what's really incredible, though, is those intricate carvings on the roof of the building. Uh, what they really remind me of is the architecture of Karai Kudi back home in the Chettinad region of Tamil Nadu. The traders over there would come to this part of the world to trade. So clearly, a lot of the architectural influence back home. in karai kudi comes from this region absolutely fascinating carved columns sculpted screens engravings on every railing top marks and it all adds up <laughs>